Hey guys, today I'm checking in from the Alabama Hills, and this pretty much marks the start of my California adventure. Now, in reality, I've spent the past two weeks in LA recuperating from my month in the Utah desert. I definitely need a little bit of a break after that. Uh, but tonight, I'm headed out to Cyclops Arch, which is just over the hill there, to do some nightscapes, and I think I'll try and take you along with me for that. Uh, last night we had a beautiful sunset. Uh, there was just this really crazy cloud overhead and stayed there all day. And when the sun set, it turned bright red. So I'll play a little time lapse of that next. Uh, I also went to Mobius Arch, which is just over that way, and was able to get some really cool nightscapes using my little light panel. Now, moving forward, after I leave Alabama Hills, I'm gonna head north and see if I can't find some petroglyphs. So apparently, there's an area where there's a ton of really amazing petroglyphs, but uh, they've all been scrubbed from the internet. They're trying to keep them well hidden. So hopefully with any luck and a couple days searching, I'll be able to find them and get some shots because after seeing uh, all the amazing rock art around Moab, Utah, uh, I'm getting really intrigued by all the carvings and symbols on there. And there's a lot that goes into it. So hopefully I can find those rock panels and uh, show you those as well. But after that, I'll probably head up to Yosemite and spend a few days there. And then it's back to LA to do some more work. But in the meantime, uh, hope you guys have enjoyed the past few videos and uh, we should be in for another fun one here in California. I'm here at Cyclops Arch and I've been out here for about an hour now taking some photos using my LED light here and uh, some without, but it's a really cool area. Of course, there's nobody out. I've got the whole place to myself. And uh, I've been doing some different photo stacking techniques, which if you're interested in that, I might be doing a uh, free tutorial video on how I do photo stacking to reduce noise in my images, but there's almost like an eye up there. Probably can't see with the light, but anyway, pretty cool area. There's even a little pack right den down in there. I heard something moving and there's a lot of scat, so he didn't bother me any though. Anyway, it's cool to see some arches out here outside of uh, Utah. And I think next I'm gonna head out to the car. And thankfully I was lucky enough to get a loaner D850 from a friend. So I'm gonna set my 750 out to do star trails tonight. And then the D850, I'm gonna use my star tracker and get some nebula and Milky Way images at the same time. Well, things are already off to a pretty bad start today. Uh, last night my car battery died on me. Thankfully I was in a park, which you can see, and uh, I was able to get a jump. So then I went out in the desert, didn't have any issues, thankfully, but got back here in the park in the morning, and now my car won't start again, and it's going crazy when I try and turn it on. So uh, I might need to get a new battery today or uh, get something else fixed, but. Uh, at least it's kind of a quiet Monday and I didn't have much going on anyway. And I've got time to kill. <laughs> the other problem is I'm about to run out of minutes on my T-Mobile plan, which sucks. Uh, I only get 100 minutes a month. And knowing my luck, I'll miss an important call and that'll hit my 100 minute limit. But anyway, uh, at least I'm here in this nice park and I'm not out in the desert. So it could be a lot worse. So I really lucked out today. Uh, as you can see here, I'm in this park right across from an auto parts store and they were very friendly and helpful over there they got me pointed in the right direction gave me a lot of local phone numbers and a mechanic showed up within 20 minutes through AAA and he was kind enough to figure out that it was my battery that was causing the problem I was running at like 4 volts instead of 12 uh, and he was also kind enough to even help me install the new batteries uh, so that was great to have that help and uh, overall I'm really thankful the way everything worked out because this could have easily happened this morning when I was way out in the desert and there's no way 
uh, he ever would have made it out there because it was so um, rough that road. Uh, so, and plus, I didn't have cell reception out there. I would have had to run a couple miles through the desert just to make a phone call, and that would have been a nightmare. So, I'm really thankful that everything worked out the way it did. And uh, hopefully, this is the end of my problems for this California trip, and uh, I can continue on without too much more hassle. And I think today I'm just going to try and stay out of the heat. But that actually reminds me, I left my sandals out in the desert. I left them outside my car. I forgot to pick them up before I left. So I'm going to head back out there right now and grab them. Thankfully, I was out really in the middle of nowhere, so I doubt anybody would have messed with them or I don't know who would want a pair of old sandals anyway. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys either up in Bishop where I look for some petroglyphs or maybe out in the Alabama hills one more time if I stay out there another night. I've made it to the petroglyphs here outside Bishop, or at least one site, and it's really remarkable to see all of these markings, of course, and uh, the more research you do, the more you see these same patterns show up over and over again, regardless of where you're at on Earth and regardless how long ago they were made. If we look here, Notice the serpent-like pattern on the left, and of course those uh, almost basket-looking grid mark. That one might be fake, but um, anyway, you see the same phenomena all over the place, and it's called uh, entoptic phenomenon. So I'd recommend looking that up if you're interested, and kind of ties into all of this, but. Very interesting sight out here as well. After a month on the road, I finally met my match. Out here, these, these horrible little sharp bushes everywhere, and uh, no way to avoid stepping on hundreds of these little thorns. So I'm wearing boots today. And I was driving down the road, the sun just came up. I noticed some carvings out of the side of my eye, so let's go. Check these out. They're pretty hard to see, but uh, they're definitely there. Almost looks like more of that serpent, serpent pattern over here. Very weird. I might be the only ones around. I've been searching all morning and I think I'm starting to get close to the location of Sky Rock. Apparently it's on top of a big boulder somewhere out here. But as I said, they're trying to keep the location very quiet. So, no uh, vandals mess with it, but with any luck I'll be able to find it here within the next day or two. 24 hours later, and I'm at Sky Rock, and it was definitely worth all of the effort to get here. Now, these petroglyphs are in really great shape, and I don't know what they mean, but it almost reminds me of electricity or something where we have these two lines running across the whole image and then it almost looks like some sort of calendar to me but very intriguing markings all along here and if we look up there as well I mean who knows but definitely a very cool piece of art way out here in the desert. Today I'm checking in from Olmsted Point in Yosemite National Park and this kind of marks the end of my California trip in a way. 
for the past week I've spent driving, actually longer than a week now, I spent driving from LA all the way up Route 395 through California and the Eastern Sierras, and this is my final stop. So I think I'm going to do a day hike on the trail here towards Half Dome, and then after that I'm going to start the long drive back to LA, where I'll spend the rest of the month catching up on some work i got to do. But uh, it's been a great trip out here in the Sierra Nevadas, especially on the east side. Uh, I was really blown away by all the incredible things that I've seen. So uh, I think this will be a great way to end the trip, and maybe I'll take you along for part of the hike as well. Right ahead of me, there's actually two baby bears, one there climbing the tree, and another one below them. Yeah, there's the other baby. And mama's at the base of the tree. I called out, let her know I was here. Uh, so I need to be very careful. I'm right on the trail right now, but I need to let them know that I'm here. And hopefully mom doesn't mind and I can go about my business, and they can too. Well, that was an unexpected surprise, and my heart's still racing. Uh, I've never seen a, a mom and her cubs out in the wild before, and I was a little bit nervous, because everything you read online says, you know, if you startle a mom with her cubs, you're probably gonna get killed. Uh, but thankfully, I heard the mom making some noise while I was walking down the trail, so I called out to her let her know I was there. That gave the time for the cubs to climb up the tree. And she stayed down there and just kept an eye on me. And the photos and videos you saw were taken with my telephoto lens. So I had plenty of space between me and them. And I stayed right on the trail, giving them plenty of distance, kept calling out to them. And uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, you know, when you're out here, you gotta let the animals know you're here because if you startle them, then they're gonna act aggressive, especially if it's the mom with her cubs. So provide they know you're there, and you don't act like a moron and try and get close for some stupid cell phone photo, uh, you should probably be okay most of the time. Uh, at any rate, I'm gonna keep hiking through the forest and I should be headed to a nice view of Half Dome here pretty soon. Uh, and hopefully I won't see any more bears. This turned out to be an excellent day hike and this is the view at the end, really spectacular. So overall, this was a great way to get out of the desert for a day and even saw those bears. So I'm going to head back now and hopefully I'll get back with plenty of time to set up for the sunset and I think today will be a good one. I'm just about at the end of the hike here and I'm really starting to drag. I think it was close to a 15 or 20 mile hike and uh, I've been pretty lazy this whole trip so this is definitely a good workout and it's rewarded with a pretty cool view here of the mountains getting covered in clouds. So who knows, we might have some interesting weather for sunset here. But anyway, you can hear the road up there. 
I'm probably half a mile from the car and uh, I can't wait to get back and get some water and food. Nine hours later and I'm back at the car and that's the thing I love about hiking out west is you can see half them way off there in the distance and it's always cool to see how far you've hiked you know back when you're in the forest back home in Ohio and Pennsylvania you can hike all day and not have any sense of how far you've gone but out west you really uh, know just how much you've accomplished in a day. Well, that was a beautiful sunset over there at the Overlook, but it is freezing cold. Um, it's probably right around 35 degrees right now. So, <laughs> sitting out there was pretty tough, considering I've been climatized to 100 degree temperatures. Uh, I spent the past month out in the desert, so uh, a 70 degree jump is pretty big for me. But the view is definitely worth it. Uh, that was an incredible uh, sunset here in Yosemite. And after this, I'm going to head back down the mountains and then begin the long drive through the desert back to the uh, 